Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. This is our third lecture video on operations research. Here, we are learning the graphical method. As we have discussed in previous lectures, we usually get to see four types of cases in graphical method. In lectures 1 and 2, we discussed how to solve and get a unique optimal solution, and an infinite number of optimal solution for a linear programming problem using graphical method. So, we have covered the first and second cases in our previous two lectures, and in this lecture we will discuss the third case and see how to solve a linear programming problem to get an unbounded optimal solution by graphical method. After case number 3, there will be one more topic or case, which is the case of no feasible solution, and we will discuss that topic in next lecture. So, in this lecture we will discuss an unbounded optimal solution for a linear programming problem by graphical method. Let's look at an example on this. So, here we have a linear programming problem. We are asked to solve this linear programming problem using the graphical method. Here, it is given that, maximize, z equals to 3x1, plus 2x2. Subject to these two given inequality equations where there are two variables in each of them. And, at last it is said that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. So, let's solve this problem now. At first, we will replace all the inequality constraints by using equation. Here we can see two inequalities in these two equations. We will simply replace these two inequalities or unequal in signs by using equal signs and convert them into equations. If there were three inequalities we would make three equations out of them, since, here we have two inequalities, so we will get two equations. So, the first equation will be, x1, minus x2, equals to, 1. And, the second equation will be, x1, plus x2, equals to, 3. So, these two inequalities are converted to two equations. This is equation number 1. And, this is equation number 2. We have seen two methods of plotting the graph in previous lectures. You can use any one of the two methods that seem easier to you for plotting the graph. The first method seems simple to me, so I will use the first method for plotting the graph where we have to divide the whole equation by the number on right hand side, and then plot the values in the graph. So, to plot the equation 1 on graph, first look at the right hand side of the equation number 1. Here we have 1 on the right hand side of the equation, so, we will divide the whole equation number 1 by the number 1. Dividing the equation number 1 by 1, we will get, x1 divided by 1, plus, x2 divided by minus 1, equals to, 1. Similarly in equation 2 also, here we have 3 on the right hand side of the equation number 2, so, we will divide the whole equation number 2 by the number 3. Dividing the equation number 2 by 3, we will get, x1 divided by 3, plus, x2 divided by 3, equals to, 3 divided by 3, which gives us 1. Now, we know that the equation for straight line is, x divided by a, plus y divided by b, equals to 1. Here, a, is the intercept of x axis, b, is the intercept of y axis, and then there is 1 on the right hand side. Now, if we compare the straight line equation to these two equations, we can see the same format. Here, in equation 1, 1 is the intercept of x1, minus 1 is the intercept of x2, and there is 1 on the right hand side, so, this is a straight line equation. Similarly, the other equation is also straight line equation. Now, we will plot these two straight line equations on a graph. So, here we have our graph. We have used a plain sheet to make the graph. You can use a graph paper if you want. Along this axis we have x1. Along this axis we have x2. And, this point is the origin or zero. Since we have negative values here, so we have also taken minus, x1 and minus, x2 axis. Now, on the graph we can see that the ranges are taken as 0, 1, 2, up to 3. We have taken the points at distance of 1 in this case, because if we see here below x1 and x2 in these two equations, the values are 1, minus 1, and 3, we can see that, the maximum value is 3, so, we have taken the range up to 3, 
at a distance of 1 on the graph. Now, to plot the first equation in the graph, in equation number 1, below x1 there is 1, below x2 there is minus 1, so, we have 1, and minus 1. In the graph, we will take a point at 1 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at minus 1. Now, we will join this point at 1, and this point at minus 1, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 1, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 1. We can also write the equation number 1 beside the line number 1 to show that this line belongs to first equation. Now, in equation number 2, below x1 there is 3, below x2 there is 3, so, we have 3, and 3. In the graph, we will take a point at 3 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 3. Now, we will join this point at 3, and this point at 3, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 2, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 2. We can also write the equation number 2 beside the line number 2 to show that this line belongs to second equation. So, here we have two lines for two equations. Now, we will look for inequalities. Now, if we look into the conditions given at first in the question, according to the first condition, the first line will be greater than or equal to 1. So, in the line number 1, we will place arrows in the opposite direction from the origin, because there is greater than or equal to sign. Similarly, according to the second condition, the second line will be greater than or equal to 3. So, in the line number 2, we will place arrows in the opposite direction from the origin, because there is greater than or equal to sign. Always remember that, if there is greater than or equal to sign, we will place the arrows on the line facing in the opposite direction from the origin, and if there is less than or equal to sign, we will place the arrows on the line facing towards the origin. Now, we have to find out the common region for these two lines that is satisfied by the direction of the arrows in these two lines. In the line number 1, the arrow is facing in this direction facing opposite to the origin, so line 1 covers this area opposite to the origin. In the line number 2, the arrow is facing in this direction facing opposite to the origin, so line 2 covers this area opposite to the origin. If we look carefully, this is the only common and feasible region that is covered by all the two lines on the graph. This region is satisfied by the direction of the arrows in these two lines, so, this is our feasible region where the arrows of the two lines are facing towards this feasible region only. If we look carefully, this feasible region is not a bounded region, it is not a closed region on all sides, the region has started from this point, and since these two lines can extend infinitely, so this feasible region can also extend till infinity as an unbounded region. So, this is the feasible region, but it is not closed or not bounded on all sides by boundary, it is open or unbounded on this side, so, this is an unbounded feasible region. So, we can finally write that, since, the solution space is unbounded, the maximum value of z occurs at infinity. Hence, this linear programming problem has an unbounded optimal solution. So, this was an example of an unbounded optimal solution by graphical method for a linear programming problem. In the next lecture we will look into the examples for the case of no feasible solution by graphical method. Thank you for watching this video.